Pat, how long would it take you to take these off? Our deep dive starts at sea level in the Ocean Gate workshop. Cutting, cutting this a little bit. Where the team is putting the final touches on Titan, their most advanced submersible yet. It brings a tear to my eye. That's director of engineering Tony Nissen. It's a lot of pain to get here. <laughs> I saw it was a lot of pain to get here. We did this extremely fast. Their goal was to build a vessel that can dive 3,800 meters for a mission to the Titanic. Titan is headed there in June. It can dive 4,000 meters thanks in part to its carbon fiber structure. The strength, weight, and buoyancy that we get out of it exceeds really any other material out there. Tony says this frame will feel about 150 million pounds of pressure near the ocean floor, but the team inside won't feel a thing. A team of five will squeeze into Titan for each dive and view the wreckage on these monitors. To fly the vessel, the pilot uses a PlayStation controller. Over six weeks of dives, laser scanners and high def cameras will map the Titanic and its decay over the past century. It's part of a larger project to study the effects of shipwrecks on our oceans. And this is critically important when you realize that there are tens of thousands of shipwrecks from World War II, many of which sank with uh, toxic chemicals and fuel oil on board. The final pieces will be put on Titan this week. Then practice dives begin as they count down to their big descent. Navy officials telling CBS News that an acoustic anomaly consistent with the Titan's implosion was detected. A piece of debris that were recovered from the ocean floor arrived at a Canadian port today. The Titan submersible suffered a catastrophic implosion as it carried five people to the depths of the Atlantic. There were no survivors. Ocean Gate Expeditions offers you the once in a lifetime opportunity to be a specially trained crew member safely diving to the Titanic wreckage site. Get ready for what Jules Verne could only imagine a 12,500 foot journey to the bottom of the sea. It's the Ocean Gate Titanic experience. Earning raves from those who've taken our unforgettable dives. There's no other trip like this. Fewer people have been to Titanic than been to space. It's tougher to go to the bottom of the ocean than it is to the far side of the moon. So we saw things that maybe human eyes have never seen before. Wow. This is not a thrill ride for tourists. It's much more. It is an eight-day, one-of-a-kind experience. You will be trained as a mission specialist and record valuable findings. A citizen scientist is also involved in the science. They are doing jobs that are essential to the scientific research, not just busy work. We are looking at the process of degradation at the site. We are trying to make a really good map of the site and its current state. This is not tourism. You're contributing. It's not a, a ride at Disney, you know. There's a lot of real risk involved and there's a lot of challenges. We partnered with aerospace experts at the University of Washington, NASA, and Boeing on the design of our hull. Every time you take to the sea, you know, there's so many things that have to go right. You know, all the electrical systems and navigation systems that have to check out. This is a very complex vehicle. Titan topside, you are out at 130 meters. We are in position for the dive. It's very well engineered and very safe, but and the team is very uh, focused on safety first. The communication is really key, I think, knowing that they never lost communication. Not one second of me experiencing anything from Ocean Gate have I ever felt unsafe. As I pointed out on the bridge earlier, your safety plan is all around the vessel. All mission specialists get to dive down to the Titanic, but the full experience entails much more. It begins with boarding day in picturesque St. John's, Newfoundland. Mission specialists meet each other in the Ocean Gate team. Everybody here instantly became family. And that's something that you take away for life. Prep starts before dawn with initial safety checks, reviewing assignments and gearing up. Then comes the pre-launch briefing, followed by boarding the Titan. Inside the surface vessel is Command Central. There, Ocean Gate operatives and specialists not diving that day are guided by the mission director before countdown to launch. Roger, platform ready to dive. 
mission directors go for platform launch? This was actually my very first time. That was the first time that I'd been inside a, a sub, and mm -hmm. uh, it was really kind of a wonderful experience. And you know you are in the deep, but you don't feel it. So it's your big day. It is my big day. Uh, how are you I'm feeling? Very excited. Very excited. To softly land like that with just a little puff of debris was movie-like. It was sort of dramatic in front of me playing out, and it was breathtaking. So it's very emotional. For mission specialists not aboard the Titan sub, there's a full calendar of things to do. This looks fun. <laughs> Lectures, screenings, tours of the ship's vast resources, including the engine rooms and recovery apparatus. Maybe best of all are the one-on-ones with experts, like Commander Paul-Henri Nargelet, leader of 30 dives to the Titanic wreck site. He and other world-class experts will be on all our missions to give you an unrivaled, up-close-and-personal Ocean Gate Titanic experience. The sub, for me, it's uh, very well done because it's uh, simple. Uh, generally, they have a lot of equipment and uh, a lot of switch. And on this one you don't have because you work with a screen and with a keyboard and it's very easy to do that. You are not only a passenger seat and uh, waiting that the time is running and just looking outside. You, you can do something inside. You can be a, really a member of the team and that's that great. Even after a successful dive, there is much to be done. A key element is the debrief session led by the mission director and subsea pilot. Simultaneously, the Ocean Gate tech team does an extensive safety check for the next dive. Excitement, thrills, and adventure on the high seas. I just loved every minute of it. <laughs> it has exceeded anything I thought it could ever be. Titanic is the ultimate dream. I mean, this is definitely probably one of the most unique, interesting uh, things I've ever done. Even going to, you know, I've been to Everest but this is more unique. This was a dream come true. But as I look back, this will no doubt be the best experience of my entire life. <laughs> come join us on our next expedition. Don't miss the opportunity to be part of history. The Ocean Gate Titanic experience. There's truly nothing else like it. This is a case that has the potential at this early stage to go to trial, um, and the damages could be fairly substantial. Uh, there will be significant issues about the waivers. Brennan says he thinks this tragedy may lead to changes in rules and regulations for vessels diving into these depths. Ocean Gate Explorations, the CEO of which was piloting the vessel, is a private company, meaning fewer regulations and oversight than any government owned submersible. Titanic director James Cameron weighed in on Ocean Gate's decision to use carbon fiber on the hull, which was considered controversial at the time it was built. We always understood that this was the wrong material for submersible hulls because with each pressure cycle, you can have progressive damage. Hi guys, more shocking details are coming out about what might have happened to Ocean Gate's submarine, the Titan. There is a Spanish submarine expert, his name is Jose Luis Martin, and he has given his expert opinion about what happened right before the submarine imploded.
he is very sure that the submarine imploded and he describes this as the implosion was like popping a needle into a balloon. That scientist the, has a pretty graphic description. He says the Titan submersible met a catastrophic end likened to a balloon popping after plunging like a vertical arrow. So he talked to the mirror and he has speculated that in the final moments, the victims likely lost balance and could have fallen on top of each other as the sub plummeted uncontrollably for at least 2,953 feet, that's roughly 900 meters. And then he said, describing the implosion that happened because of that, like puncturing a balloon. So the theory is they have already risen quite a bit and then something went terribly wrong and they were shooting down into the ocean like an arrow, deeper, 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 back to 2,953 feet. So how I understand this, they were not level anymore. Something happened that they went like this and then they went down way too fast, which put a lot of pressure too fast on the hull. And that's why he says it's like putting a needle into a balloon. So, and why does he say they might have fallen on top of each other? Because nobody was wearing like a seat belt or had even a seat where they would be fixed in. They were all just sitting loose in that sup. And even if that sup goes a little bit like this, everything's sliding into one direction and bringing everything out of balance. So the picture that this submarine expert describes is really catastrophic and it's totally new uh, compared to what we've heard so far because we just thought okay they're trying to rise up and the the hull was crackling and at some point it just cracked and it popped but what he says it something was wrong and then it went into a deep dive and if you've seen my last video um where I talked about um, that there has been a malfunction with the stupid game controller that was steering the submarine. They were spiraling out of control on the ocean floor and had problems to thrust. Am I spinning? Yeah. Oh my God. So what if something like this happened again? This is very scary and guys, I also saw um, a documentary of a YouTuber that has been on expedition number three. So the guys that died were on expedition number five. So, and before that guy documents, they went on the Polar Prince and they were pulling the submarine behind them, but they had to work during the night you gotta imagine the Polar Prince was on its way to where the Titanic lies. And during that trip, they were trying to find a problem on the sub. And there was a problem with the thrust. That's what he says in this documentary. When he filmed it, he did not know what would happen later. Unfortunately, um, there's a lot of copyright. I can't show you the footage. But there were so many repairs. And the CEO even explains that he doesn't know where the problem's coming from. And then what I find really scary, he invites the guests to come out to the platform that holds the submarine and help repairing it. I mean, come on. This is really scary. I also watched a documentary from 1998, uh, German television, there was two people that won a trip to the Titanic and they went down with a Russian submarine. And when you see that, this looks way more stable and they look, everything's way more in order and everyone looks like they have a plan and they know what they're doing and they're maintaining it, they're controlling it. The sub looks, I mean, that's 1998, the sub looks, way more stable and technically advanced 
than that little submarine thing that the Titan was. So um, was it the CEO that had kind of like a charismatic personality because that YouTuber says, well, he's my friend and he was so great and they were so nice and he kind of tried to bring everyone into the project, even the paying customers. So let's have a look at the Titan, you can help, whatever. And then the weather was so bad for that YouTuber that the CEO said, well, we can't go to on a dive. It's the ocean's too rough, whatever. We got to abort that mission. But he invited the guy on a test dive with the sub after they had done some repairs. And guys, and then, you know, shortly after that, they were spiraling out of control on another mission on the ocean floor. And uh, I think after that or before that, I don't know. I mean, I think after that he was mission three and then there was mission four and then at five was the tragedy. So it's all not, doesn't give you a good feeling. And the feeling it gives me is that the CEO really seriously covered up that there were problems, right? What the Spanish submarine expert Jose also said is that the five passengers of the Titan probably knew their fates for a minute before they died. And he said, imagine the horror, the fear and the agony. It must have been like a horror movie. And, and I believe it. If they were diving like this all on top of each other deep, at least the CEO knew what that means for the hull. Based on Jose's calculation, he said they knew about their fate, that they were about to die immediately about 48 to 71 seconds before the sub imploded. And he ex also explained that the submersible was descending smoothly in a horizontal plane until an electrical failure occurred at an altitude of around 5,577 feet. That's 1,700 meters. And he says this caused a loss of engine power and communication with the polar prince. So the investigation in this incident is still ongoing. And what's important is the voyage data recorder from the polar prince is being analyzed in a lab. So we'll see if something comes out of that. And, uh, Questions have been raised about the delay that has happened in contacting rescue officials after loss of communication. So to me, that could be that the Polar Prince had instructions to not alert anyone to endanger the project because they probably were aware there, that there are some issues and problems with the SAP and in the past they were able to, before catastrophic event happened, they were able to resolve it. So um, very, very scary, guys. What the expert also says that when that electrical failure happened and the sub went from this, like this, what even accelerated the diving like a straight arrow is his calculation, roughly 400 kilograms, is that roughly 800 pounds? of passengers that were in the porthole, like at the front, on top of each other, compromised in the submarine. There were additional weight in one point that made it go down faster. And that diving into the ocean's depth, the hull, because of that, experienced a sudden, a really sudden increase in pressure. And that led to a strong compression of the container where the tourists and the pilot were situated. So in these moments of total darkness, it's completely dark there. They don't see anything. They don't have any light anymore. They were faced with the realization of their dire circumstances. The Jose Martin expert explained after those 48 seconds or one minute, the implosion occurred, followed by instantaneous death. Pain is only as strong as its weakest link, while a pressure vessel is only as strong as its weakest point. And maybe there was a micro fracture that was acquired in previous journeys down to the Titanic or not, but something, there was a weakness. And the ocean 
is merciless. It will not forgive. It's pressing in on you in all directions. And even though they weren't at the bottom, there was sufficient pressure that whatever weakness was there, it was just, it was instantly. And, and honestly, Aaron, that is a huge consolation because these folks did not die a lingering death as we all worried that they might be suffering for days. No, it was instantaneous. They didn't even know what hit them. So thank God for that. If you are more interested in that Ocean Gate Titan topic, check out these two videos on my channel about the same topic. And guys, if you made it that far in the video, I hope you liked it and it would be awesome if you haven't yet, if you could subscribe to my channel and hopefully I'll see you very soon in one of my other videos. Stay safe. Bye.